Hello, assembler students. Um, if you understand the push, pop, and call return, um, and how the stack works, we can now see how a whole function or subroutine call works, where a main program will call a subroutine passing the arguments, and the subroutine will set up a stack frame, do some stuff, and then tear down the stack frame and return. So. Here is our main program. All it does like that. It has two arguments, P and Q, and it has a call. Um, and here's our function, and which we'll go into in a moment. And I didn't mean to move the frame there. Okay. So as we saw before in our main program, we start out by pushing um, an argument. So we will push um, the contents of the location labeled Q, which is the second argument. We always push the last argument and then the next to the last, and we push the arguments in reverse order. So the first uh, push will go here, OK. And this will become 7 fox fox charlie. And the value of q will go here, which is going to be a3, right? And then we'll push p. So p has got a 4 in it. So that'll be a 4. The stack pointer is now here. And then 7 fox fox 8. And now, having pushed the two real arguments onto the stack, we'll do a subroutine call down to f. The subroutine call will push the return address. So it'll return the, the address we're going to return to is going to be the address of this instruction. That's pushed onto the stack. And we're now at 7 fox fox 4. And we're here. We jumped to the beginning of the subroutine. So the call instruction pushed the return address and jumped to the beginning of the instruction of the subroutine. And the first thing the subroutine is going to do is save a register. So almost anything you do in assembler involves using a register somehow. So Really, the first thing you got to do is save a register. If you don't save a register, you can't use any registers without, you know, messing it up for somebody else maybe. So we're going to push EBP. So that's going to be a push, right? So the push moves the stack pointer down, right? It becomes seven fox fox zero, and here is going to be. Saved EBP register. Okay, so whatever hat that whatever number it was in there originally, some we don't know what that was. It was something we don't care. That gets saved. And now the next thing we do is we um, so we pushed EBP, and now we're going to copy ESP into EBP. So EBP is going to be seven fox fox zero. And it's effectively EBP is pointing in the same spot here, right? So EBP has this address. EBP is going to define what's known as our stack frame. And the point is that ESP keeps moving. It's a moving target. We're going to push more stuff on the stack. ESP moves. But ESP is sitting right here, right at you know, the, the point where it was when we entered the subroutine and, you know, we saved one thing. But EBP is a kind of a fixed pointer to a spot in memory where notice that EBP plus zero is this word here, right? So EBP plus zero, 
And we can actually put a phrase like this in an assembler instruction. We can, if we want to move something, uh, we can add a constant value to a register and then use that as an address. So EBP has an address. And from that point of view, this is going to be EBP plus 4. So if I put this into an instruction, brackets EBP plus 4, then it will take the address in EBP, 7 fox fox 0, add 4 to it, getting 7 fox fox 4, and then touch that spot, spot in memory. Okay. So let's go back into our subroutine. And we did the copy ESP to EBP. And now what do we do? Well, we're probably going to save some registers, because we're going to be using these registers in our computation, and we don't want to clobber them for the calling program. So we'll push EBX. So that's going to move the stack pointer down 4, right? And then save EBX. And now we're going to push ECX, right? That's going to move our stack pointer down another 4. So here's 7 fox fox, 7 fox easy 8 now, right? OK. So the stack point is moving, right? Um, and um, if we want, we could even push a garbage word on the stack and then use that as a temporary variable. Like if we needed a word somewhere to you know, save some things in, or we could even push another thing onto the stack, OK? Okay. Okay. And that would be at what? That would be at EBP plus 12 or minus 12. So this is minus 4, minus 8, minus 12. 12 plus 7 fox easy 4 is 7 fox fox 0. Okay. So we could, if we needed it, we could get some temporary variable space over there. No problem. OK? The point is, is that the stack pointer is moving. But even though the stack pointer is moving, EBP is fixed right here, defining our stack frame. OK, so we've saved some registers. We've done some other stuff with the stack. Now we need to get the arguments from the calling program. So we're going to do this. Move ECX comma Y. What's Y? Y is a define. This is, if you know C, very much like a C define. What it's going to mean is that whenever it sees this Y here as an argument, it's going to edit your source code. It's going to literally put this string into the source code where Y was. OK? So it's going to literally change this instruction to this instruction. Going to edit the source code to read that. And now, OK, what does that mean? That means go find your this value, add 12 to the value in the register, and that's the memory location you're going to touch. So EBP is 7 fox fox 0. We'll add 12 to that, and we're loading from here, which is our Y argument. OK, and from the main program's point of view, this was Q. So from the subroutine's point of view, this thing is called Y. From the main's program's point of view, it was called Q. But that's how subroutines work, right? OK. All right. So we're actually loading into ECX. Um, we're loading that value. All right. And now we're going to load EBX with X with EBP plus 8. So we'll load the second argument into X. All right. And we're now we can do some computation, right? Because we managed to get our, our parameters. And the reason we're able to do this is because EBP over here is this sort of fixed point where everything is relative to EBP. Stack pointer is moving, fine, OK? All right. We might be pushing and popping things for convenience. Eventually, we get done with our computation. We're going to imagine we had the result in EAX. 
Now we're going to pop off ECX and EBX. So we got done with our computation. Okay. Now we're going to pop off okay, ECX. That will the saved ECX will go back. Okay. The saved EBX will go back into EBX. Stack pointer is now here, right? Okay, the stack pointer is now here. We need to restore EBP. So we could just pop EBP because the stack point is here. We could pop EBP to save it and stop to restore it. Pop would take this thing. But there's also a possibility that the stack pointer is, you know, still somewhere down, further down. Okay, if we weren't careful with our coding, you know, maybe we might have, instead of saving registers, we might have gotten some, you know, uh, some space there by just, you know, moving stuff. So the safe thing to do is to just do this. This will put the EBP back into the stack pointer. All right. So that's optional if you've been careful to. Uh, Preserve ESP here, or you know, pop everything you pushed, but maybe okay. And now we're going to restore EBP. We'll pop EBP. Okay, so EBP then goes back to what? EBP then goes back to its initial question marks. Okay, and when we pop that, that's our stack pointer now. So save DBP is gone, right? And save DVP is gone. Now we're here at the return address and we can return. So we pop DVP, we return. So return is going to do what? It's going to pop the return address, right? Return address is now gone. We're now sitting at 7 Fox Fox 8. And we returned back to here. That was the return address, was that address. At this point, we're going to add ESP comma eight. That's going to effectively make this back to eight thousand, right? It'll just push the stack pointer back up there. We're not really popping anything. We're just pushing the stack pointer back up there as if we had popped something. This is where the stack pointer started out. Okay, so these guys are now effectively gone off the stack. They're really still there, but they're effectively gone off the stack. And now we can save the result because remember the subroutine had its number in EAX before it returned, and now we can save it. All right, so that's the normal subroutine call and return conventions. Most high level languages use it, as well as C uses it, most assembler uses it in x86 land. In the 64 bit assembler. It's a little bit different. It uh, puts certain of, certain of these parameters. If you have only a few parameters, it has certain registers which is, uses those registers and puts the arguments in those registers. But if you have more than a few, then it's doing the same darn thing. And the call and return um, stack stuff is going to be the same. So this is the far and away the most popular in most assemblers. Um, way of handling stack frames and subroutine parameter passing call and return. So thank you.